we're up. Episode, wow, it's episode 15 already of Mission Statements, a Delta Bravo Urban Exploration Team podcast with my guest, my man over here, Alan Perry, also known as Casper. What's going on, brother? What's going on, buddy? How are you tonight? Well, like I said before we were recording, I'm all right. I'll be honest, I'm a little shot. My boss came down with the, it's, he's like a late bloomer. He fucking, he has, he got COVID like two days ago. I'm like, I'm like, how do you get that shit now, dude? And there's like a million things going on at work. So he's out and it's just, so I'm not going to sit here and complain because I could not be working, but I've been getting my ass kicked at work. And uh, like I was just saying before, I had a quick, I had to run to the hallway so to get keys made up. So I was watching that Netflix show, The Watcher, and as I'm watching, because I'm like a psycho, whenever I watch anything, I'm always looking to see if I recognize spots. I was like, oh, I saw the Chrysler building in the background. I'm like, that's like right around the block from my job. So I hit that and I went to the hardware store. So I got home. I threw myself in the shower. I put that together. I just posted it now. And I'm here with you. That's my night in a nutshell. And I do it all over again tomorrow. And I get more cross-eyed as the days go because I'm shot. Oh, I know exactly what that's like. I mean, so I work in I work in manufacturing, so I'm running forging presses for car parts all day. And then yeah. I get home. From, I get home from work, and usually I take a walk around the block with the wife. Um, sometimes we walk the dog, um, but then I jump back in the car after dinner, and I'm going to find something. Yeah, yeah, man. You know. And, and I'm back in the house seven thirty, eight o'clock at night. Like, all right, yeah. time to do this all again tomorrow. All over again. But it's it, it's such a good like this whole Delta Bravo thing. It's such a good. I say it all the time. It's it's the perfect excuse to get out of the house. Even oh, like, yeah. dude, I'm always tired. Like even on my days off, I still like, especially like the last couple of years. It's like I don't like I I say it all the time. Like, yo, I'm gonna sleep in tomorrow morning. But then. I get pissed off at myself. Like if I, I'll set an alarm, not, not as early like for work, but I'll still set an alarm. And sometimes I'll just like try to snooze it and I'll shut it off and then I'll sleep crazy late. And I'm pissed off the whole day because I'm like, well, the cemetery that I wanted to go to closes in two hours and I don't want to feel rushed to go there and shit like oh, that. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I don't want to feel rushed doing anything. So I do it at my own pace. And, but it's, it's just a it's just a great way to get out of the house and it's it's just I don't know uh, like I said I'm always tired but for some reason I'm always digging and looking I just said I I had to run to the store we're shorthanded at work I had to go to the store for something at work and there I am hitting a spot real fast and then go back to work because I don't know I would feel like I missed out for some stupid reason even though tomorrow I'm gonna be in the same spot anyway but I don't know. I was going to say, you're going to be right there tomorrow, but you had to do it right now. I had to. You know why? Because I'm an OCD idiot, and I have shit in my phone. I have shit in my phone. Like, there's like three, there's like three pictures of my phone that I have literally for years that I haven't found the spots yet. And it's almost, at this point, it's almost like I'll be just as satisfied hitting the spot as it is to delete that one out of my phone. (laughs) I'm sick of looking at the same picture. Like, I got to get this out of here, but I have to hit this spot. They're like bucket list spots that are super hard to find. But Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're in New York, and it's not like they're in fucking Texas, but they're not far from me. But it's just like I need like a whole day to just devote to try to find a particular spot or get into a particular spot. So, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a it's 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 like a job, but it's super fun. (laughs) <laughs> oh so i got i got a spot that i have been steady looking for and, and when i say steady i don't mean like i devote like at least point parts of every day right now like yeah, same once here a month or once once a month once every two months i'm like you know what i'm gonna revisit that and see if yeah. i missed something yeah that's, that's that's how i am with the ones in my phone too i'm the every single day but it's like come on man like i gotta stumble upon something yeah so I mean, I've I've had the one that I I've been looking for for, I mean, I've probably been probably been in the team for ten years now, 
I mean, uh, back in the T Radio V days, I mean, I okay. was following along back then. Um, okay. I don't know how what's long the, what, that's been. What's the spot? The uh, so one of my favorite bands um, is Dropkick Murphys. Okay, they've always been one of my favorite bands. Okay. Um, the album cover for Do or Die, where it's all the dudes, like all the construction workers in their hats, standing in front of like a giant piece of equipment in a city yeah. somewhere in like the 1940s or 50s. I'm like, I've got to find where that's at. Well, I come to find out that it was actually Ken Casey's dad or uncle in the picture and it was just a picture that was hanging on their wall in their house oh shit and that's where they got the that's where they got the, the album cover from and i'm like i've got to find where that's at and yeah. you know years and years and years of looking you know i've never even come close to it but i'll still like dig back at it and be like i'll look for like the extended view of the same picture i do <laughs> i do the same I, panoramic view you're looking for panoramic shit from pictures that were taken in the 40s which it didn't exist <laughs> i get it i fucking completely get it dude i'm an and you're like and then you're like looking for the most minute like minuscule shit all the way like, in the background and then you blow it up and it gets pixely and you can't see it <laughs> yeah you're like, I do it all a bar the across the window yeah street signs i i, I do it all oh, yeah. the time yeah and you look for the high res version and then oh forget it yeah or you look for the cassette tape version of it because every once in a while those had a little bit more of a picture to them yeah <laughs> yeah man yeah mine mine are one of them i don't think is going to be that hard i just have to i don't know why but i have to get it. i think it's on the brooklyn side underneath the Williamsburg Bridge, and it's a scene from the movie Jacob's Ladder. And it's like when, when Tim Robbins is walking, and then he, it's just like this shot. It's almost, you know where, you know what it is? You know who told me where that is? Because I think it's the exact same spot. You'll, you'll, you'll know this. I asked Hoya from Madball about the, the back cover of Set It Off. Okay, okay. Where do you see the beam? And it looks yep, like they're yep. under a bridge. It's that yep. shot, basically. And he was like, I was like, yo, where is this? He's like, yo, that's the Brooklyn side underneath the Williamsburg Bridge. And it looks exactly, it's a few years, I think it's like the Manball record came out like four years later than Jacob's Ladder, but it looks like the exact same spot. Yeah, yeah. So, so I got to actually get my ass there. I don't know if I have access to that spot. Like, I don't know what's changed. I might have to... You know, climb over razor wire fence or some shit. I don't know, dude. But that's one day where I have to just devote a day just to go there and try to get that. And then there's one that's been hounding me like crazy. And even Mona is is having difficulties finding it. And it's the scene from The Exorcist where Damien is having, he's dreaming and he's dreaming of his mother. And his mother is walking up out of the train station and then she waves at him and he's running across the street and she's waving at him and she just yeah. turns back around and goes back down the steps. I need that picture of her at the top of those train stations, yeah. that, that train station. But we're like, maybe it's the opposite side, like across the street from like the Brooklyn Bridge, but there's no identifying anything. It just says like BMT and it just says like part of Manhattan, but that could be Brooklyn to Manhattan or Manhattan. Like it, you can't tell. And there's like a small portion of a brick wall, which could be a glass fucking Starbucks or a Bank of America yeah. now. And the yeah. actual structure of all of the, like the railings and shit have all changed. And there's nothing identifying behind it. So it's like, what do you go by? But that's like my bucket list shot that I have currently to get. <laughs> yeah. It's like a half a sickness, bro. <laughs> Oh, it, it's definitely a sickness. It's definitely, mm -hmm. it's definitely a sickness. You know, you mentioned like, um, like super hard to find spots. Um, I remember years ago, and I don't know if anybody ever did find it. Um, there was one that we swore was in Brooklyn. It was the Wicked Lester album cover. No idea. And I was looking for it. Mona was looking for it. I think there was a couple other people involved in it and it's super simple. It's just him sitting on a set of stairs. 
And That's not like, simple. It can be anything. Well, exa- exactly. Because he's just, you're just, he's just sitting on the stairs, but they could be any. And it's so like unique. Like the windows don't match the railing that goes down the stairs with the building. Like, yeah. Yeah. You find that, these, that like, one. yeah, you find like these weird, like, things that pop out of something that's relatively uniform. Like, for instance, I did, I went on like this little, went down this rabbit hole of like the, the real Lufthansa heist shit. Oh yeah. So, but I found, I went down a rabbit hole again of where the real Stax Edwards where you know, Sam Jackson's character, but the real guy, Pernell Edwards, where his van actually was when they found it, like the day after the heist. Okay, okay. So I found the actual picture, but there's no real address that's connected to it. It was like, okay, I read a whole big article. All right, it's in Canarsie. I'm like, all right. And then I read something, it's on 90, whatever. It could, so I'm looking, then I look at the picture and everything, it's all connected houses, it's all brick houses. But there was one banister, one railing, that was like a little bit of an odd shape in the back, in the background. And it's super gritty and weird. But there I am, like at work, scrolling up and down, looking up and down the streets on Google Maps, looking for fucking handrails all the way down 95th Street, which is crazy avenues. I'm looking at houses, zooming in like a psycho, but I finally found it. And like two days later, I went there and I got it. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, and how many times as you're, as you're, as you're, uh, as you're Google street viewing and you're going down that street, how many times did that thing turn just a little bit and you think and you it, missed it, so you back up? And yeah. You're like three blocks back. Like, yeah. Oh, damn it. Yeah, all the time, man. So I get mad. I get mad. <laughs> So before I moved to Ohio, um, before I moved out here to Ohio, when I lived back in Pittsburgh, I worked at just a car dealership during the day. Okay. And I just worked in parts sales. So if nobody was coming in to buy parts, I was just sitting at a computer all day long. Yeah. So I just had up my Facebook, had Delta Bravo up every day. If somebody was looking for something, I'm like, Mm -hmm. all right, street, here we go. Let's find it. Yeah, I do it all the time with downtime at work. It's because there's a lot of downtime at work. It just so happens to be a crazy time right now. But I'll be downstairs. I'll just be looking up shit and just like like right now. I'm trying to find an address from that that new show, The Watcher, and and it could be any Manhattan Street, and and it's number forty eight on the door. It could be anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it, it could be way uptown. It could be downtown. It could be a, a area in Brooklyn, but I think it's Manhattan. But that's another thing. But then you go, you know, filming locations to watch and Netflix, blah, blah, blah. And everything is just about the house itself. It's like, all right, enough. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. enough. But, but yeah. But uh, well, yeah, the other thing um, too is, the other thing with that too is what, they're, what they don't do like they used to. And it's helped me out a lot in movies from the uh, 70s and 80s and even in the mm-hmm. early 90s. They would put in the newspaper when they were doing casting calls. Yeah. Where they were going to be filming at. Yeah. You know, so you could have like kind of an idea, like um, a good example was uh, some years back, we were looking for some scenes from the movie Flashdance. Okay. And when we were looking for the movie, the scenes from the movie, I ended up buying a subscription to newspapers online. Okay. And was scrolling through newspapers online in like 1982 to find out when they were having the casting search and where it was at and where they were sending people. Cause I'm like, well, if they're doing the casting search in the South side, then they're not filming in the North side. Right. You know what I mean? They're not going to waste the time. Sure. You know, and they're not doing that kind of stuff anymore on movies. No, not at all. Yeah. I've, I've paid for like, you know, like the, it was like the trial subscription or whatever to like, the New York Times archive that you go way, way back. It's like the forties and fifties. Yeah. Because you'll go and then you'll try to read a certain article. Like, like I was doing that, like with all the mafia stuff that I was hitting up and it's like, and then it'll kill, it'll kill you. It'll be like, nah, like you, you need to subscribe or whatever. So I'm buying subscriptions just to try to 
get a little bit of information from this article. Sometimes there's no information. Sometimes there is. So, yeah, we, really we, we, but we jumped through hoops to fucking find this shit. But like I say it all the time. It's like the and, and it's true. I don't remember exactly who said it. Maybe it was Phil. I don't know. But I think it's kind of like the running theme. And it's true. It's like the end result to all the crazy shit that we do is the mash that we post and everyone's like, holy shit, or likes it or whatever. But it's all about all that behind the scenes and the work and the effort. And like, it sounds silly, but like the passion that goes behind all that stuff that people don't realize. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? I mean, it's so it, it's wild. Like some is easy. Some of it's easy. Like today, like it was five minutes. I knew where it was. I did it just to do it. It's new. It's like, whatever. Maybe it's too soon. People are like, ah, it's too soon. You got to wait a little bit. Nah, fuck that. It's right there. I want to do it. But some yeah, of them are fucking hard, man. Some of them are real hard. I mean, like, so when, um, so me and my wife were in San Francisco a few years ago and I, I took a, I didn't even take it on my phone. Cause I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to charge my phone. So I don't want to have all these pictures and I'm trying to take a picture and look at my phone at the same time. So I'm like, yeah better i'm just gonna print out so i printed out and like got a manila file folder and i'm like flipping through this thing and i'm like we're walking around and um some of the guys that were out in uh san francisco in the last couple of weeks uh posted some of the, some pictures um yeah that i did um they they, they went back and redid sure and most of them look better but um doesn't matter we were walking around in san francisco and we're trying to find we were trying to find the Patty Hearst spot where okay. Patty Hearst was being led into federal prison or federal court. Okay. And there's a noticeable like Goodyear sign behind it, like the old diamond Goodyear. Yeah. And we're walking around, we're walking around. We can't figure out like what court building is this? Cause you know, if it was a court building then it's still a court building now. Yeah. Like finally we just like walked, there was a, uh, there was a cop sitting in his truck in the middle of a park. Yeah. And I was like, hey, do you know where this picture was? And he was like, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. He's like, go about three blocks that way, hang a right, and come back towards you. You'll see the Goodyear sign. Look to the right, and you'll see the stairs where she went in. And I was oh, like, shit. sweet. <laughs> yeah, man. That's good. I ask people all the time. I don't give a shit. I talk to anybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't give a shit, man. Yeah, there's um, there's a spot from I have it in my phone for a little while. I even asked I, I asked Craig, uh, Craig ahead, I'm sick of it all, and it's it's a couple of shots from the potential for a fall video, and I'm, oh. I, I mean I send him pictures. I'm like, where is this? He's like, I don't know, Manhattan. I'm like, dude, how do you not know? He's like, that was like a hundred years ago. I was like, it wasn't though. It's like, how do you not know where you filmed for this video? You have no idea. Danny Boy hit me up like that one time, too. And it was like the Shamrocks and Shenanigans video, I think. And I sent him a shout. I'm like, dude, where is this? He's like, Manhattan. Don't know. I'm like, what? That was a different life ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. But then I sent it to Mona, and 35 seconds later, he didn't even know oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, that's on the corner of Hudson and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how do you know that? He's like, I'm not even sure. It's like I used to live a block away. Of course, he used to live a block away. He used to live on that corner. I love that. Dude. I live. I lived on the second floor of that building. Of course, he did. He definitely did. I love that dude. <laughs> yeah. So now is a, a little, uh, maybe a little blast furnace podcast esque. I guess. Well, you're into hardcore. I haven't talked about. I haven't talked about this in. Since I killed the Blast Furnace podcast, and that's like six months ago, eight months ago, or some shit at this point. But um, yeah, you're like you said, you sent me the picture of Lou from Sick of wearing the Blast Furnace shirt, right? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, that was at like that was at like some festival. What it festival? Was it, it was at that um, brutal attack, was, brutal assault. Yeah, it was at brutal assault over in Europe, mm -hmm. and it just like so. I, I've been following them 20, oh. 30 years now. I oh, mean, yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, first record. First record, yeah. and then it was like right after the right after the first 7-inch came out. It was – the first record is what – I think it was – honestly, I think it was like MTV played like the Injustice System video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And it was like brand new at the time. And then I was like, oh shit, what else do they have? And then I got the seven inch, like the same day that I got that record. So basically from like 1989 and on. Yeah. So for me, I was a little bit later than that. Okay. But so for me, it was like probably like built to last. Say, like 90, yeah, like 96, 95, 96. Like, yeah, um, that's, yeah, it's built to last. Yeah. Ni- uh, Scratch the Surface was 94. So built to last was 97. So it was in between. Yeah. So it would, yeah, it would have been about that about that time, and you know that that led me from uh, from them to to Agnostic Front to Madball. Oh, oh to, yeah, uh, the whole the whole thing. Everybody, yeah, it's it was just game over. Yeah, yeah, man. They and, uh, and it and it was weird because I was never really um, like growing up. I was never really into hip hop that much. Right. Like, I mean, I'd listen to some stuff that was on the radio or whatnot. Yeah. But I was never into that kind of stuff. But to be honest with you, like the the punk rock and hardcore is what started getting me into more hip hop. Yeah, and, I, I, I understand. And getting into La Coca Nostra, getting into yeah. Ill Bill. Yeah. Um Getting you into know, that kind of stuff and yeah, then bringing like, it back around to the old school shit. Yeah, it's like we're on podcast time right now because this is going to drop for a couple of weeks. But last night, two nights in a row, it was a crazy lineup. It was Cypress Hill, KRS One, Sick of It All, Ill Bill with Slain. That's yeah. crazy, dude. Like I, I don't know how if you lived anywhere near. Boston or New York, you weren't at any. You weren't at that show unless I want to smack my own face because I was at work and I didn't go into either one. Now, now I understand. So that. mad like, at myself. If, if you're at work, you're you're at work. You're at work. But yeah. I mean, yeah, like, if I wasn't at work, yeah, yeah, I would have rather have driven to Boston to see them in Boston. Yeah, I did. Um, so, so me and my wife used to do crazy shit like that. All the time. I mean, whenever uh, I want to say, yeah, I mean, obviously we've been to New York a few times for Black and Blue. Um, yeah. Always a great time. Yeah. Um, but for, when we lived in Pittsburgh, uh, sick of it all. Street Dogs uh, did that little East Coast like four date run. Yeah, we're in Pittsburgh. And we're like, fuck it, let's drive up Saturday night. Yeah. So we just left Friday night, drove up to Boston. Were they with that band from China? Yeah, it was like quick. They're like sand or. Well, sand is for a B no. guy from Japan, uh, King Lai Chi or something like yeah, that. Yeah, King Lai Chi. That's who it was. King Lai Chi. Yeah. 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 They played. They played. I was at one of those shows. They played at Webster Hall and I was at one of those shows. So it was on that same run. So we seen them within the within two, three days of each other. Yeah. Yeah. It, it literally was like, you know what? It's a 10 hour drive to Boston. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have minded. I would if I would have known, and if I wouldn't have had work, and I would have taken the day off in advance, which I would have had to work anyway because my boss is out. Like I was saying, I still I would have to cancel my plans, but I would have set out to go to the show. I would have made like a couple days out of it. I would have went to the show, and I would have hit spots in Boston because I've never hit any spots in Boston yet. Oh, you got to. And I need, I need to. There's, there's several spots in Boston I need to get to. Even I've hit spots in Boston. See, I haven't been to. Last time I was in Boston was the final Bane show in 2000. I don't know, was it 2016? Yeah, June 2016, I think. That was the last time I was in Boston. That long. That's crazy. I used to love that band. Some people hate that band. Some people absolutely love, love, love that band. I'm one of those people. And you're one of them. I'm one of those bands. I don't give a fuck. That band is amazing for whatever reason. I don't know what it is. That could be a hole in the podcast. Yeah. I I I I feel that 100 percent because for me that band is a veil. Okay. And no matter what, like any opportunity that I'm gonna have to possibly go see them, yeah, it's like. I'm six years old and I'm in a candy store with an yeah. unlimited shopping spree. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. It's just like it, you get those chills. You get like that weird nervous chill. Like there's no oh, reason yeah. to be nervous, but you get like that weird nervous energy and those chills. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. Yeah, like, and then you're like, am I, and then you're like, 
you're like looking around, you're like, am I fangirl? What the fuck? Yeah, that? um, that, you're definitely fanboying out. You definitely are. You're just trying to hold it inside, and that's maybe oh, yeah. your stomach is a little nauseous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could do it. I completely agree. I get it. I get it 100%. Shit. So now, what I see all the time on your Facebook and shit like that, you're forever bombing shit, Casper. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like that's, all that's, the time. I, I spend the majority of my time looking for spots to paint. All right. Um, so one of the things it, I, mean, I actually met a dude probably like maybe three months ago. He was down here in Ohio from Brooklyn. And he he saw me wearing your blast furnace shirt and he was like, I used to love that show. He's like whatever happened to it i was like oh yeah he quit he quit doing it a few, he quit doing it a few months ago i said he's focusing on some some other stuff now yeah. you know told him about delta bravo he's uh it's like I, I think the name he goes by is like cir40 i was like oh yeah that's jimmy i was like he's like man i'll tell you what there is he's like i come down here when i want so it's so like, weird to me i say i feel like no one ever like would remember it or and even when I was doing it, I would see the numbers. And I knew people would listen, but it still seemed weird to me. I don't know why. It's like, yeah. okay. <laughs> so so one of the things where I, I met this dude was we got this um we got this spot here on the west side of Columbus. Um and uh, I mean don't get me wrong, it's Columbus, Ohio. It's not right. New York, it's not Boston, it's not right. Los Angeles. I mean it's the Midwest. Right. We've got some pretty like sh shitty areas, of right? Course. Um, and the west side of Columbus is one of them. Um, but we got this spot. It was an old bowling alley that my buddy Justin rents out, and he sells spray paint. You know what I mean? He rents it out, runs it like a graffiti shop. Oh, that's cool. But he's got the entire property. He can paint whenever he wants, whenever he wants, as long as it's nothing obscene. That's awesome. So, so usually, like, I don't know, like two, three times a year, we, and it's usually me. We go up there, we buff the walls, we pick a theme, and it's all right. This is what the theme is this this month. Let's paint something with it, you know. But yeah. then he also he also has this kind of like community outreach sort of thing. Okay. So we we went to Lowe's and Home Depot and we bought a shitload of wood, you know, back before wood got really expensive. Stupid expensive, right. And we built all these boxes out of wood, out of four by eight sheets of plywood. All right. So one of them's just a four by eight sheet here. And then another one is two of them, but square. Okay. Then there's another one that's four by four by four. So it's 16 foot wide. Nice. Then there's another one that's five by three by five by three so it's like 20 foot wide and they're free walls so if you feel like getting out of the house and you want to you know you want to go paint something cool it don't matter morning noon night somebody else painted something on it awesome but you want to go have at it yeah so we spend a lot of time up there you know and then obviously yeah. extracurricular activities that of course we don't have to talk about but yeah yeah we we, we, we don't have to say anything about that you know, if but, you know, if people get it. If you don't, you know, stay in the dark. <laughs> we um, you know, I'm up there probably three nights a week. Okay, just painting because that's like that's my hobby. Like, yeah, and it's and it helps that it's a mile from my house. Yeah, so I can be out the door in there in a minute and a half. Yeah, paint for an hour or two. Yeah. It's got to be like therapeutic too, man. It's something you enjoy. It's it's just like like what hitting spots. It's like yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, you get in your zone, and yeah. like nothing else in the world exists except yeah. for what you're doing. A hundred percent. That's how I used to get when I was still doing the Blast Furnace podcast, and like with the mission statements thing, I wanted it's on purpose that I made all of the flyers are uniform. That everything is. A certain way yeah. you know everyone has basically the same template except for the picture and the name in the episode obviously but like yeah. all of those blast furnace flyers some of those things man i would no joke i would take like eight hours ten hours sometimes on a flyer and i was putting those things out once a week i would oh, just yeah 
And I would just, I would shut all the lights off in my room and I would just grab a Red Bull and I would sit there and I would just zone and nothing else was even around me. I would just get in the zone and get all into shit. And I guess it's kind of like, you know, it's like an artistic thing because I'm taking that. It's so, everything was such Frankenstein shit too. Like, I mean, you've seen some of the flyers. I mean, some of them are insane with crazy detail. And, but I was something that like very, like I said, I'm very anal retentive and OCD with certain shit. So it's like, I'll do a flyer. I've spent like six, seven hours on a flyer and I sit back and I look at it. I'm like, don't like it. And just delete it and just start yeah, over right, again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just because like someone else would be like, oh, that's fucking dope. But me, I like something about it I don't like. It's, it's out. Well, it's, it's, it's funny you mention that because so so we had our big Halloween party on um, Saturday night. Um, it was from like two to 10. We had people painting. We had vendors there. We had food. There. Like it was a good time. Like. Um, we had professional pumpkin carvers. One of my buddies is um, like a nationally known like TV star for like carving pumpkins and shit. Yeah. He's there like teaching kids how to carve pumpkins like a pro. And um, but we're painting and it's, and it's starting to get dark. And I'm like, I'm starting to lose like where my colors are. I'm like, I'll yeah. have to come back tomorrow and like do my touch ups and stuff. Right. And they're like, what, what, what do you mean? I'm like, well, if you see right there, like I missed that little spot or I want to tighten this up like that looks amazing why are you like and i'm like it's not right i don't no. you're your own biggest critic and you notice yeah. that somebody would never notice i'm the same way dude and i'm like you see that little cloud there like it goes off to the left a little bit and i wanted it to go more down and strip yeah yeah we're, we're i know i i completely get it dude it's the same thing like when i put my mashes together too it's like it's like i'll make it work but sometimes like there was there was one, I don't know, the other day that I did. It was like Saturday Night Fever or something. And, and I put it on the computer. And I'm like, what the fuck was I taking a picture of? You know what I mean? I'm like, what was I thinking? What was I doing? It's like there was a certain part of like the whole storefront was changed, obviously. But there was certain, you could see the structure. And there was, a, there was like a, a concrete color, just like a, a square that was like... Yep maybe 10 feet up in the air. And that was still there. So I'm like, all right, well, there's my reference point and blah, blah, blah. I look at my angle and this and that. And then I'm taking pictures and then I put the pictures onto my computer and the, the concrete square is like all cut off in the top left. I'm like, why was I so close? What was I taking pictures of? What was I seeing that I thought I was seeing, but I wasn't seeing? So I was like, there's no way I can make this work. So I just scrapped it. It's only a few blocks away. I can get it any time. But it was just the point of what the fuck is going yeah. on? <laughs> hey, I, I can't even tell you how many pictures I had on my computer that I didn't, like how many mashes I've done that I just never posted because I'm like, no, this angle is nowhere near right. Yeah. And I'm like, a thousand miles away from home. I'm never coming back here. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, well, I could, you know, I could pull a fill on it and like stack them on top of each other. And right. I'm like, nope, I'm not doing it. No, it's like cheating. We'll <laughs> sniff it out. We'll be like, ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> but, but what's cool is like now, like I'll put it, I'll be, you know, the mashes I do, I, I'm, I'm, cause I'm satisfied with it, but I'll go back in the archives from like 2016, like when I first started. And, like, I recently did a few of them. There was, like, a couple of Saturday Night Fever, uh, Ray Liotta in the driveway from Goodfellas about to cross the street and, and pistol whip the dude. Like, I looked at my original when I first did them, and I look at them, and I'm like, I guess when I was doing that originally, I was like, wow, this was good. Good enough for me to post it and be, like, all proud of myself and shit. But then I look at them now, I'm like, oh, like, that's bad i'm like like why is this like er like i was only focusing on like the curb line and like this part of the house and where the person's standing but the house to the left and everything is like all over here and it's, it's just completely off so the majority of the time i once i put the mask together i delete all the other pictures that i take because i take several pictures to get the angle right oh yeah yeah but when i i went back into like archives shit, there was a few of them where I didn't delete all of the original pictures that I took. 
So I'm like, oh, this is going to get a rematch. I'm going to rematch. So it's like probably about five or six that I recently posted where I even said I like rematch from like 2016 because like the original one was just bad. It was like bad. So I have to like, I try. And then there's a couple that are really bad, but I don't have the original pictures. I'm like, oh man, all right, well, whatever. But yeah, try to oh, back up that. and correct and clean up my own mess. <laughs> oh, I, hate I think some of the first ones I did, um, I get like, it's probably been almost 10 years. It yeah. almost, because I've been with my wife 12 years now. Yeah, so I'd say it was probably about probably about that long ago. Um, I think the first ones I ever did were from the movie Slapshot. Okay. Um, and I mean, I I didn't even put logos on them. Like right. they were just well, simple. way back, way back. There's like there'll be Danny Boy will like repost something, and he'll even write like before there was even a logo. Oh like, yeah. There was yeah. a point. There was a point where there was just no logo and. There was a, a handful of people that were hitting spots, and there was just no logo yet. So, yeah. but now it bothers me when you don't put a logo. That's like a <laughs> running theme. People think I get legit mad. I don't, but it's kind of like, come on, you should know this by now. Like, yeah, it's a yeah, rule. It, it's a rule. I mean, that's what sets us apart. This is what makes it a Delta Bravo thing. The logo. Yeah, I, I mean, exactly. Otherwise, it's just it's anything. anything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like I posted the other day. It was like a picture. It was just myself. I was sitting on George Collins' childhood home steps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was badass. And then so, it was like a stranger who was like, I hated to even ask him. I felt like an asshole. Did you okay to take my picture? But I wasn't going to do a selfie. I couldn't do that either. But uh, but I started talking with him or whatever. And then I was on the train. I was on the train platform on my way home. But I posted it. And then somebody, I don't remember who posted, who wrote it. Might have been you. Was it you? Maybe not you. I don't remember. They were like, I can't believe I'm actually able to say this, but no logo. I'm like, nah, man. Like, I'm on the train going home, man. And then when I got home, what was the first thing I did? I put a fucking logo yep. on it and I edited it and I uploaded that instead. I was like, edited. He was like, oh, Jesus. Like, well, yeah, man. I mean, sometimes you get so excited. Like, you just got to get it out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like I, I can't blame that guy. I, I can't, I can't blame that at all. I mean, Carlin was one of my heroes, you yeah. know, growing up. So mm -hmm. crazy. What do you have? You, you know what? You have a couple. I didn't realize until I was going in to grab like pictures and stuff like you know with the Instagram when you flip and you you know this this oh yeah you know, or whatever. So I was looking at your shit and and I didn't realize. It's one of it's 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 one of my favorite fucking hits, bro. Was this the 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 sniper fucking the Life magazine? Oh yeah, Cover? yeah. Kent State, the Kent State. Dude, Park. when I first saw that, I'm like, yo, that is crazy. Like, what a crazy so mash. It it was so that was that was super wild that I was able to go and get that because. I was literally like coming from Pittsburgh, me and my dad and my little brother were driving to Akron. Okay. And we were driving to Akron because my dad wanted to buy a Jeep. And like when, when my dad like sees what he wants, he's like, I don't care where it's at. I'm driving to go get it. Like, but it's gotta be exactly what he wants. All right. So we found this Jeep in Akron. And we're like, I'm like, all right, let's go on Saturday. I'm off work. We jump in the car and we drive out to Akron. It's like two and a half hours, three hours away. And on the way back, I'm like, I'm like, hey, dad, get off this exit. And he's like, what do you mean get off? This? I was like, get off this exit. He's like, what's off this exit? I was like, can't stay. And he's like, and what's your point? I was <laughs> yeah. like, we got to go to Kent State. Uh -huh. So literally, like, we get off the exit and he's like, all right, well, tell me where I'm going. I'm like. Just follow the signs that take you to the university. Yeah, and then we'll figure it out from there. <laughs> and I'm literally, like, in the passenger seat on my phone, Googling Kent State shooting. Yeah. And just scrolling through pictures and pictures and pictures. Yeah. And I'm like, this is exactly what we're here for. 
Yeah. And, and my dad's like, I had no idea. Like he, he was even around then, but he was like, I was like, you, you never heard the song four dead in Ohio. Right. And he's like, that's what this was. A, that's what that song was about. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, it was right here. And then I took the picture and mashed it while we were in the parking lot. No shit. While we were standing there. Cause I wanted to make sure before we left. Yes. That it was going to line up. Right. Yeah. Because I didn't want to like be on the way home and find out my angle was wrong. I hate, Oh, it's the worst. That's and why I, take, because, I probably take a lot more pictures than I should. But, and a lot of times, like, I'll just look, I'll be like, oh, that's the one. And I nail it. But I take like a bunch of pictures. Yeah. So that so don't happen. I'm like, I want to make sure this lines up. And I, and I lined it up and I was like, that's why, I, that's why we had to stop here. And he was like, wait, you just did that right now? And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy, dude. It's yeah, that one, that one was that one was super fun. Yeah, man, and, and like I dig, I dig. Like you probably saw some of them, if not all of them, was my this whole road trip that I went off of at the end of the summer. Well, mid late July, I think it was like 178 mashes I wound up getting over the course of a seven almost eight day road trip. 178 mashes. I was mashing like fucking 40 of them a day. I had them all done in under a week. I had them all mashed in under a week. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's it's like its own job. Yo, psycho. A fucking psycho. So, um, but yeah, I was like, you know, I want to get it out there because what I want to do, I want to get them all out there because I'm not going to start planning another big trip or anything like that. I have to get all this out. That's done. Now on to the next thing. Yeah, but um, yeah. that was the same thing like with me when I was, when I went to... um uh texas university in austin oh yeah yeah dude that was crazy too another sick bastard sniper from a tower you know what i mean like yeah like i was standing there and and you see and there's like these college kids and they probably have no idea about the campus that they're walking around on but i found that kind of late i I had no idea if i would even because i know it's a college campus i didn't know how security was going to be or anything like that i had no idea but i was prepared in case we had like free room like we were there for like an hour and a half just walking around and it was pretty crazy dude like yeah, all that- i mean it was a, it was the same way just uh just i think i texted you a couple weeks probably a couple months ago now when i just so happened to find out jesse owens was yes. right in columbus so i went to the house that he stayed in uh, you know right up the street from my house uh-huh. and then i'm like well, i got this picture of him at the shoe which is like the the, the ohio state stadium they they call it the shoe and i'm like i see it i got this picture of him at the shoe so i'm like well let's see what it's like now my wife works at osu but you know i i don't know how things are down there like where right. i can where i'm allowed to walk around where i'm not allowed to walk around right. like what parking is so i literally just pulled right up put the four ways on. I'm like, I think it's right here. Run out into the grass. Like, yep, that's it. Took the nice. shot. I mean, the sidewalk even lined up on it. And I yeah. Like, it's a crazy, I love, like that true crime stuff. I mean, listen, I appreciate, you know, even like stuff that, that I don't even know or I'm not into. Like if someone does it, like I think it's awesome because you're just taking the time. I understand the, the planning and the time and whatever it is to do, whatever it is you're doing. But like the true crime stuff and just the, just the fact that you lined up the cover of a Life magazine and just the way it was, it's just, it's a portion of the grass and then you see how on the Life magazine and how it goes off and how the, the road, ex- it, so it's exactly where that was. It's just something different because it's from a magazine cover. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So it, I think maybe that's a part of it that I thought was kind of awesome about it. You didn't take... Like a, a photographer or a news shot. It was like the cover of a magazine, which was dope. Yeah. Yeah. So there was one other spot I wanted to go to, and it's still on my list. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a bucket list for me, but I mean, if I'm up in the area, yeah, you know, I have a million of those. Um, but there was one up in Michigan. Um it was the album cover for the Dead Kennedys. Um, Which one? Frank in Christ. Okay. Yeah. No, not Frank in Christ. The one with the little with the little uh, Shriners in the parade. Um, not fresh food for rotten vegetables. No, no, that's 
and so that one was in San Francisco too. Okay. Um, it's not plastic surgery disasters because it's a hand. No, uh, it's the hand. In God We Trust is the dollar sign cross. Yes. So maybe, yeah, maybe it was. Okay. Yeah, Bedtime for Democracy was the white um, with like the Statue of Liberty thing. Right. Maybe that was it. But there's yeah. like Shriners like in a parade, like riding their little tiny cars down a street on yeah. the album cover. And that album cover was from a like bicentennial parade in Michigan. Oh shit. Like in 1976. No shit. And I found the magazine with the original picture. It was just a like, hey, bicentennial parade. I found that picture yeah. in the magazine. And I'm like, you know, I'd like to, because then I could do the Dead Kennedys album cover with the magazine original with the match. Right. I, yeah. See, I like that shit. It's our own different twist. And it's like, there's layers to that shit. Like, I oh, get absolutely. It. Yeah, bro. I like that shit. It's a different. Of... No, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh. I was going to say, it's like a different twist on it and different. So I, I appreciate that kind of shit. One that was that, like, one that really, like, was probably my all time favorite. Um, that you hit? Just, that I hit in just the mash was the um was this was the flash dance alley scene okay and it was the 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 two girls um two girls walking down the alley and there was the um the rock steady crew break dancing in the alley right in in pittsburgh all right it took months and months and months of trying to nail down exactly where that was at Finally, I, we nailed it down. I called my mom because I didn't have a license at the time. Um, <laughs> um, I, I I was on a DUI suspension. Okay. Um, I think we're going on five years sober here this month, actually. Congratulations. I just hit eight years. Um, I didn't have a license, so I, t I said to my mom, I was like, Mom, let's go. Like, I want to go. Like, I want to go hit this spot, and it's in downtown Pittsburgh. And where I lived was, like, an hour away, so me and Mom drive down there. And we're standing in the alley, and I'm taking the shots of just the shots. And my mom's like, tell you what, I got an umbrella in the car. Grab yeah. the umbrella. There you go. I was like, all right. So we did a mash of a mash with me in behind the mash with the umbrella. That's so crazy. Like three different. So if you look through the picture, if you go back and look, it's on the uh, on the group page. If okay. You go back and look at the flash dance scene. You can actually see the three different pictures. The now I got to go look. One hundred percent. And me holding the umbrella in the background behind it. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it, and that's probably like my number one favorite mash. Yeah. Strictly because of the mash. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few, there's a few, like sometimes, like there's a couple, like there was one in particular, it was in Texas, it was at this place called, what was the fucking name of it? Why am I drawing a blank? It'll come to me. It's like this weird ghost town in, in, in Pioneer Town. <laughs> Pioneer it, Town, yeah. Yeah, from Fear the Walking Dead. And there's a shot of a girl, she's up like on a roof. She's coming out of a window and she's on like this awning where you have to look like real, real close, like to even see where the mash begins and ends. Like, I don't even want to sound like an asshole, but it's almost too good. So like it, it is, it really is because it just looks like a screenshot, but there's yeah, a yeah. tiny, tiny, tiny bit where it just kind of fades onto the other awning. And you have to really be looking. But if you look, it doesn't even look like a mash. So there was a couple of times where it, it it lines up too good like that. So, like, I'll, like, darken or lighten either the screenshot or my picture to add contrast to it. Because, yeah, just to make it look like it's not a perfect. Right. Where it's not a screenshot. Yeah, here it is. It's like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You can't do that. 
but yeah, yeah. dude, it's uh, you have any like what's what's your but besides that one that you can't find from uh the dropkick Murphys, what's like your your uh your your your, your number one spot do you have one of them that you need to get to yeah and i know exactly where it's at uh as a matter of fact it's actually two of them there's actually two of them and right. i could probably do them in the same day but it'd be about like six maybe eight hours worth of driving okay um in the same day um so you know how we were talking a few few months ago when you were on your mafia hit roll um <laughs> Yeah, I went a little bananas with that, but I still have more. That's never ending right there. That topic right there is never ending. Especially in New York, it's never ending. Never. Yeah. So the two that I want that I want to actually get are are mafia shots. And one of them's not even actually a, a an actual mash. Like okay. it's just a location. Period. Yeah. Um, is the matches Red Fox in uh Detroit. Okay. You know, do you know what the matches red box was? No, the matches. I was like, box. okay, like waiting on for you to school me because I'm not, I'm not hip. It was the little, it was the the restaurant in a suburb just south of Detroit that was the last known place that Jimmy Hoffa was seen alive. Fuck, you need Where to get the, the car pulls in, he walks over to the driver's door. Uh, by witness accounts, obviously, because nobody right. took a picture of him standing there. Right. He walks over to the door. He recognizes the driver. Somebody gets out of the passenger seat. They put him in. They escort him to the back seat, and then the car drives off. And that's the last time anybody ever saw Jimmy Hoff. Dude. Other than oh. the people that made him disappear, you know, right. obviously, of course. So, Dude, go get that, man. <laughs> it's crazy. So. so me and my wife were actually just talking about that. Um, I think I'm going to actually go up here in the next couple of weeks because she's going to be flying to Seattle for work. And uh, I was talking about doing it this this coming weekend um, on Saturday, but we gotta, we're got we going down to Louisville for lunch with a couple of friends. Okay. And I was like, you know, if we weren't going to Louisville, we could drive up to Detroit and go to the Red Fox. And the restaurant's closed now, like, but I'm like, I've still got to go. Like the building Does it look the there. same as it did back when he disappeared, or like a little bit at least? It looks the majority because it. I mean, it was just the seventies. Right. I know a lot of shit changes from the seventies sure. now, but in the Midwest, less changes. Yeah, you know what I mean. Sure. Um, because I know that Detroit was really bad, like even like in the nineties and shit like that. But I know it's come up a little bit, so it could have been one of those spots where it just, you know, maybe got completely wiped out or whatever. I, I believe, I mean, from the Google Street View that I've seen of it, it still looks pretty close okay. to the original. All right. So, I mean, even if it's not like it's the spot. It's the you spot. Know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then the other one is um, over by Akron. Um, and I, I didn't even know about it when I was over in Akron doing that Kent State um, uh, shot years ago is – the spot in the parking lot where Danny Green got blown up. Oh shit. Okay. Um and I it I know where the spot is. There's a sticker on the telephone pole that says long live the memory of Danny Green. Wow. That's awesome. So That's awesome. like those two spots, I know where they're at. And like I said, it's like six, eight hours worth of driving. But like they're they're up on my list of like, yeah, that's gonna happen. So probably yeah. like, I think like the second week of November, my wife's going out of town, so I'll probably just take a day and drive up to Detroit and get some photos. Yeah, why not, dude? You you reminded me what when you when you said you know even if it's not really the same, but it is it is the spot. It reminded me this was a couple of years ago, maybe it was right before the whole COVID thing. I think. And I was at work and I don't work that far from the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, right? So at that time I watched, I think it was like on Amazon or whatever, but it was it was the mini series. It was the history of the mall in New York City. Mm -hmm. I wound up having uh Craig Ravella, the guy who played Vito Genovese in that on the Brooklyn Blast Furnace. But okay. um so 
in that, they were saying that how lucky Luciano for a little while he lived, I don't remember off the top of my head, it's in my phone, at a particular apartment on a certain floor in the Waldorf Astoria. Like he lived there. Yep. So, but they were doing a major renovation of the Waldorf Astoria. So I'm like, I don't give a fuck. So I go there and now there's all these construction dudes, contractors, all that. Now here's this, I'm a fuck, this weird dude. I come over, I'm like, listen, <laughs> I'm like, I need to get to, let's just say it's the 13th floor. I need to get to the 13th floor because I need to get to room, let's say it's room 25. I don't know. I don't remember off the top of my head. He's like, that's not there anymore, though. I'm like, why not? He's like, because all these floors have been completely renovated. I'm like, all right, who's the engineer on the site? Who's like the foreman who's doing all the all the carpentry and shit? Who is the architect here? He's like, well, why are you asking me this? I'm like, and I start laughing. I'm like, because Lucky Luciano used to live in that spot, right? So he looks at me, he's like, but it's not there. I'm like, all right, I'll buy you a case of beers if you find the guy on this site with fucking blueprints. Because even if there's a wall in the middle of where the door used to be, I don't care. It's the spot. Yeah, he didn't let me in though. I think he thought that I was a half a fucking crackhead, but I never got access. But I think the the actual hotel is like almost done, so or it might be done. So I gotta revisit that. I actually forgot about that until you just said that. So I gotta go revisit, and I don't know. I I, I gotta dig deep and, and 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 find out who the engineer is or the architect, and I need to find out. Speaking of um like the 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 spot like regardless of what it is um now um and i know you're into all that like true crime and horror kind of shit yeah, um but then again you know, I, I, but then again like i hit like what's eating gilbert grape like yeah I, yeah, yeah. It, i mean it's it's literally anything i mean i do the same thing like i'll just yeah. be anywhere i go like what happened here yeah it was same notable here. and somebody took a picture of Yep. Or even didn't take a picture of, but it was notable and happened here. Yes. You know what I mean? Yep. Um the um I want to say it was in I want to say it was on Avenue A, um, in the lower okay. east side. Okay. Was um Danny Rakowitz's apartment. Oh yeah. Um that was bad. Yeah, you know what? I didn't hit that. I did I, it's, I was thinking because you did the son of Sam. I did a whole shit. Yeah. I did Son of Sam before the Netflix shit. This, yeah. this, Son of Sam was the first hit I ever did. And it was the fire hydrant where he yeah. was parked in front of when he got the ticket. That was my first one yeah. ever. And then, uh, and then I went down a rabbit hole. I went up to Yonkers to his house and all that shit. Me and my girl were walking around Untermeyer Park because we watched the, the Netflix thing. Now there was caves and shit like that. It's up in Yonkers. We're walking around out to my park trying to look for fucking like caves that like have caved in and shit, trying to find like all these secret shit where fucking David Berkowitz would be hanging out with his little weird cult buddies and shit. But yeah, I, we, we were on a, a on a Son of Sam, the 44 caliber killer. I don't know if there's a harder name for a serial killer than that. You know, the 44 caliber killer is insane. But uh, yeah, no, I didn't. I never hit his apartment. I gotta, I, I gotta dig. And uh, dude, I'm in the city all the time. Do you um? Do you ever talk to um JJ? JJ, uh, Cromag. John I, I, I haven't. No, I know he's talking now. JJ, now, now, of course. Um, I haven't spoken to him in a while because he moved out to Florida. Um, because he knew exactly where the building was and what the apartment was so going back one of the years that me and my wife i could i'll shoot him a fucking text he'd be like oh shit how the fuck you been um when we came up for black and blue um we did his um we did his walking tour um I i did it once before and he pointed right at the building was like that's where the butcher Tompkins square park lived like that's his apartment building was right there and he was up in that floor and like he had all of those details. Dude, he used to he used to fucking 
he used to it was basically he would feed pieces of people to homeless people in the park yeah yeah, yeah. it's fucking crazy bro i don't it's, and i don't know why he's not like known you know what i mean like He's it's not like you, you have like you have like your five main, you know, you have your Ted Bundy, your Dahmer, your Gacy, you know, your Albert Fish, your, you know, maybe the Boston Strangler. You have Charles Manson, who's not a serial killer, but you have those people. But certain people like I don't know if you listen to the episode I did with Kevin Bednars, but we were talking. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, dude, you ever hear of the toy box killer? And he's mm-hmm. like, no. I'm like David Parker Ray. And he's like, no. And then like. Two hours later, he's texting me. He's like, bro, what the fuck do you have me listening to? I'm like, oh, I told you, man. Like, that dude is the craziest dude. Like, yeah, Dama was crazy for his own reasons. But this other guy was on uh, just as crazy, but on some other shit that was just like, yo. So, but he's not really known. You know what I mean? Like, people don't know who the toy box killer is if you just mention it. They're like, who? But that dude is like... Mount Rushmore of serial killers, bro. Crazy. It's, I think it's wild because a lot of them. So, like, I was talking to somebody a couple weeks ago and we were talking about, um, we were talking about Danny Rakowitz and Jeffrey Dahmer because they were talking about, you know, obviously the new show on Netflix, Dahmer or whatever. Yeah. And, um, they're like, you know, he was, he was feeding his neighbor a sandwich made out of this, somebody he chopped up. And I'm like, I'm like, Hang on a minute. I was like, it was the same shit Danny did in New York in the 70s. Yeah, but he's feeding like, like big so stacks like, of stew and soup with people to homeless people. Well, yeah, so like I'm comparing the two and I'm like, they both existed in the exact same time. Yeah. In two different places. Yeah. Yeah. And like that, you can guarantee like they didn't know each other, but they no. were both doing similar like crazy fucked up shit in different places yeah dude yeah see now see now you mentioned it because i honestly i completely he was out of my head like i completely forgot about it. now you're gonna make me go down this fucking rabbit hole and now over the next month i'm gonna hit where he's fucking buried where his childhood home was where he killed this is where he served his first fucking pot of people in Tompkins square park i'm gonna be hitting everything now because i'm this lunatic like that i i need to I, like i realized i think once I do one thing w- that has like a big story, I need to basically hit every spot that completes the story of the person's life for the most part. Like I did that with like John Gotti. I did that. Like, yeah. I went to his house. I went to the Ravenite. I went to the Bergen Fish and Hunt Club. I went to the cemetery. I went to he's coming out of the gold coffin out of the out of the out of the funeral home like i did all of everything i did that the same thing with like uh, with crazy joe gallo i did it with carmine galante i did it with a lot of these same people so now you're gonna make me go on this fucking insane thing about this cannibal fucking maniac tompkins square park butcher dude (laughs) thanks listen but i like it though because now it'll give me a reason okay because I know if I really dig, there's a billion more spots down on the Lower East Side and in the village that I can hit. But like, I don't, I don't honestly, I don't think in my phone right now. I don't think I have anything in that area because I'm down there often, and I hit yeah. everything whenever I'm down there. So now I got something new. So now I'll go down there. Plus, my daughter loves it down there and shit too. So we'll go and I'll tell her what she what we're doing, and she's like, Dad that's a little crazy, but she doesn't care because she's cool, bro. She's getting into all this Delta Bravo shit too. It's awesome. She's 13. She's on her yeah, phone yeah. looking for spots. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, nah, like, do you. Like, I'm not interrupting you. Go do your little your little exploration and try to find shit on your phone because it's something you like and we'll go there physically. Like, whatever you're into, like, you want to go and hit a spot from whatever, let's go. And there's that movie yeah. Wonder. There's that movie Wonder. I don't know if you ever oh, seen yeah. it. Yeah. I never would have see seen it. I heard about it. Yeah, I never would have watched it. But my daughter was like, oh, I want to watch this movie Wonder about this kid. I'm like, all right. It's actually a really good movie. And we're watching it for the first time together. And she, there's a girl in it. And she happens to be sitting on the beach. And you see, like, the Wonder Wheel. And she's she's like, she's on Coney Island. So as soon as my daughter's watching it, she's like, Dad, can we go Delta Bravo that? Just like that. I'm like, yeah. So, like, the next day, we drove. It was, like, two miles away. 
And we hit the spot on Coney Island and she wanted to go see. She's like, wow, it's kind of cool. And she got she gets into it. The basketball diaries, that's all because of her. Oh, yeah. Freaking 20 spots from that movie, all because of my daughter. It's like a bonding thing with my daughter. And she's finding spots on her phone. Dad, look, like here's in the movie, but look, there's the tree. But obviously, Dad, the tree is a lot bigger now because this is 1994. And look, they're walking here and this is the building here. It's like I'm just I'm standing there just listening. I'm like, you're right. Like, you want to take the pictures? Like, okay, I'll try. And she took a couple of the pictures and I missed her shots. It's like, it's awesome. That, 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 that is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, man. So now you're going to have a Lower East Side adventure. Oh, yeah. Bro, next, next summer we're going to California. My daughter can't wait. I was like, you got to do good in school and we're going to California. She's like, okay. She's already looking for spots. Like, all these shows that she watches. I have no idea what the shows are, but she's already all in. I'm like, let's go to California for a week and then drive back to fucking Brooklyn. I don't care. Let's go. She's all Dude, excited. I'm she you. can't wait till school is over. It's already been, just basically just started. But on that one, you, you say you're going to be starting in like Los Angeles area, right? I'm going to start oh. north. I'm going to start a little north in like the San Francisco area, then drive south de- down. Right. I'm going down. I want, what my goal really, what I really want to do, I want to basically make a big W across the country i want to go okay. i want to go from san francisco and hit everything down san francisco go into arizona go into new mexico then once i'm mm-hmm. done with new mexico pop up to tulsa past texas go up to tulsa and then go back down on the other side of texas hit new orleans and then mm-hmm. hug, and then like hug down go like make my way up and through the carolinas georgia and then back up to Brooklyn. So basically a W across the country. That's what I really That's, want to do. But I don't know if my do- my daughter's she's in, but I don't know if she's going to be able to, you know, I don't think she's going to enjoy that much of a drive, but maybe she will. I don't know. That that drive from, um, so me and my wife did that um, in 2019. Not, not exactly that, but we did um, part of that trip um, in 2019. So um, it was, it was, wild we i don't know if you if you're familiar being down in texas most recently um bucky's gas station oh dude yeah so we found the first bucky's that they opened outside of texas and yeah. i think it's gulf shores alabama okay yeah i had to stop so my dr- my drill instructor uh, i don't know i did a podcast with him i yeah. met up with him down on the road trip it's weird and friends he was just in new york very strange but but he was like, you got to go to Bucky's. I'm yep. like, why? What's this with Bucky's? He's like, there's no other place like it. We found a fucking Bucky's. I'm like, yo, this place is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, Bucky's is awesome. <laughs> so, so 2019, we had just gotten married. Like, we flew to Palm Springs and got married in the desert. And we're like, all right, well, we got to have a, we got to have a honeymoon. So, what do you, you know, we were thinking about what we we're going to do for a honeymoon. And we're like, the first Bucky's outside of Texas open. Let's drive down to Alabama to Bucky's for our honeymoon. We're like, <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> so we had this plan, and we were just going to drive from Columbus down to Alabama, go to Bucky's, and then drive back up. Uh-huh. Three days later, I find out that Avail, after 15 years, announced they were going to get back together and play one show in Richmond. Oh, and shit. I was like, I hate to break it to you, dear, but we're sidetracking this whole honeymoon road trip. If I get tickets to go to Richmond to see a veil, we're going to Richmond to see a veil. Right. And sure enough, I ended up getting the tickets. I mean, the tickets for that show sold out in like, I think, eight seconds. Yeah. I mean, it was nuts. So yeah. we started in Columbus, drove to Richmond, Virginia, went to the show left Richmond and drove straight down across through the Carolinas and Georgia over into Alabama um, before we stopped for the night in Montgomery. I think okay. it was Montgomery where um, Martin Luther King's church was, where okay. they all, where they marched up to the state house. Yeah. Um, I got the Rosa Parks shot while we were just, we just stopped overnight and I'm like, this was the Rosa Parks bus stop, like right here. Yeah. You know, crazy. And then, down to Alabama, down to the to Bucky's, over to New Orleans, and then back up to Nashville. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's so many spots. Like, like I say it a lot. Like once I never did a road trip like I did this last summer. And now it's like every year it's like it's bucket list. I don't care. It'll be a different route. It'll be a different part of the country. But yeah. every summer I take a chunk of my vacation. I put I put a little bit of money away every week. So it's like when it comes, it's like this is road trip money. Like, I don't care. Yeah. It's, you know what time, I mean? yeah. it's it's probably I spent like four grand on my last road trip. I don't care. I could have stayed a week and a half in on an island somewhere in a beautiful place, but then, all right, I laid on a beach. Whatever. I can close my eyes on Coney Island. And I can pretend I'm somewhere <laughs> else too. Who cares? You know what I mean? But just the whole adventure of it and just seeing different shit. Like I don't care. Money. I have a job. You know what I mean? I make money. Exactly. But, you know, just to travel and see different shit, that's experiences. And you can't put a price on that shit, dude. None. You're like, oh, that's crazy. You spend that much money. Oh, how much? What? How much? Who cares how much it was? I work with you. We're at work right now. You Who cares how much it was? Like, who cares? I'm getting paid. Like, I'm not stupid. You know what I mean? Like. I'm not going to not pay my fucking rent. You, know, you plan these things and, and that's what you do, like a normal human yeah. being. And it took me a long time to be halfway civilized, but I think I might have, I have a grasp on it. A little bit. A tiny bit. A little bit. A little bit. But it's something that I enjoy doing, so I make it like a priority. Like, all right, well, you know, even if it's like 50 bucks a week, 20 bucks a week, 100 bucks a week, whatever it is, whatever I, sometimes I can't really, sometimes I, just 10 bucks, but it's something, anything. You know what I mean? And if I have three, four grand at the end or whatever, five grand, then all right, beautiful. All the whole, then I start booking everything. I plan out everything. I do the days, how long this is going to take. Book. I start booking hotels and I confirm hotels. Now it makes me know, okay, we need to do all of this and we need to make it regardless to this spot because yep. we have room. Sometimes there was a couple of times I had to call, listen, just double check in. I just needed a late check in, blah, blah, blah. No problem. Everything was so smooth because of the planning. Everything. Yep. Yep. And that's, and you know, me, me and my wife do trips like that usually at least once, if not twice a year. Yep. Um, sometimes they're here in the US. The last one we did over, in, we went over to Germany. Um, it was the same thing over in Germany. It was like, we have to be here at this day, but we want to go to Liechtenstein this day, Switzerland, or yeah, Switzerland this day. Um, um, France this day, you know. Yeah. That's every single Europe, thing is planned. Yeah, there is there are so many spots, bucket list spots overseas that I would love to one day go to. Like, dude, just to be there, like I want Mona was there not that long ago, but mm-hmm. I want to go to fucking Omaha Beach. I want to yeah. go to Normandy. You know, it might sound really fucking twisted or whatever, but I find it super interesting. But you know what? I don't care. I'll say it. I want to go to Auschwitz, bro. I want to go there and walk around there, and it's going to be super heavy and fucked up. But yeah, but yeah, but I I want to see that shit. You know what I mean? It's so yeah, you know, I'll do the touristy shit. Yeah, I'll go see the Coliseum because of just that shit is dope. You know what I mean? Like what used to happen in that place is insane. And it's a tourist trap, and I get it, but I want to see the Coliseum up close and personal. You know, like even like what I find insane, like a lot of people don't mention it or take pictures of it when they're over there. I want to see Circus Maximus, where it was the big fucking chariot racetrack where they used to fucking, bro, that the, the insanity that happened on that thing is it's like second to none. But like, I want to walk on there, you know, like shit like yeah. that. There's certain shit like that that I need to go. Maybe, maybe that's what I'll do. Like in a couple of years, I'll set out to like make a plan to do a European a European vacation. You know? <laughs> yeah. Be fucking all Clark Griswold over there. <laughs> you know? But yeah, a hundred percent. But yeah, you've hit some some shots that I would love to even go and visit myself, man. You know, like even a, a, a bunch of people have done it, but I don't care. I want to go to the spot where Forrest Gump decides to stop and turn around. Yeah. I want to do doesn't. it. Yeah. Why the fuck not? You know what I mean? It's like people want to go see, you know, all the warriors and stuff over here in Coney Island. All right. I've been there. It's I walk through Coney Island all the time, but I understand why somebody would want to. Me, I'm just Absolutely. like, whatever. 
You know, me, it's like, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's Coney Island, whatever. It's, but it's the understand. same thing with the exorcist stairs. Right. I mean, but like, to somebody that's there, it, all right, whatever. It's not a big yeah. deal. Yeah. I've been there a few somebody... times, and every time I've gone there, I'm like, this is still fucking, this is dope. You yeah, know? It's cool. Yeah. It's the exorcist stairs. It's, so it's the same thing. Um, it's the same thing for me, like up in Mansfield, Ohio, where they did Shawshank Redemption. Dude, that's um, another thing that I would I would love to go fucking hit. Um, it, it, it it's like you're still in. It's still it's like you're still in the movie. Like the town, yeah. like the buildings are still the old buildings. Like you you feel like you're there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's awesome when you go to a spot and it feels like you're on the set of the movie. Yeah. Like, legit, nothing has changed. That's happened several times. Texas Chainsaw Massacre House, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Gas Station, Goodfellas where he's crossing the street. Like, I've, yep. I'm i standing in the middle of the street looking at both houses like, yo, like, this is crazy. Like, this is yep. nuts right now. Like, I'm in, I feel like I'm in the movie. That was so like when I was in Mansfield, that was there's a park bench in the center of town. Like there's a roundabout in the middle of Mansfield. Okay. It's a small town. And I, I did the mesh of um, uh, Brooks when he's sitting on the park bench feeding the birds. Yes. And I literally I, I think I actually put a sticker on the back of the bench. I yeah. believe there was a Delta Bravo Philly sticker on the back of the bench. OK. Um, that I got from uh, Joe. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I literally just had to sit down on the bench and just yeah. sit there and look around, like yeah, bro. Well, that's that's a part of the whole thing, man. It's your personal experience and like sit down and just take in the moment, bro. It's like, how am I here? Well, I know how I'm here, but this is still crazy. Like, why am I here? Like, this is, you know, it, it, twenty years ago, if you would have told me, I'd be sitting here. I thought you were crazy. You know, yeah, yeah, that's exactly. how I, that's how I was when I was laying down. I was about it was like two o'clock in the morning at the greaser hideout across yeah. the street from the outsiders' house. I'm laying there watching the outsiders. I look over into the other room and there's another bedroom, and I see an outsider's house throw a uh, throw blanket. I know that right across the street is the Curtis brothers' house. There's a state gold neon sign in the bedroom. It's all dark. It's all rustic and shit. I'm watching the outsiders. And it's super quiet. And I hear the freight train going by. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I made it a point to realize and take in this moment. Because however long it took the freight train to pass was how long that moment was going to last. Yep. So I stopped everything. And I just, I couldn't see the freight train. But I was like looking towards the window. And just taking in my whereabouts. I'm like... This is fucking crazy. This is crazy. What a cool fucking moment that you can't, you don't know the feeling unless you're in the situation. And that's a lot of the reasons why we do what we do for the majority of the spots that we hit. Like you said, like, did I get this crazy, oh my God, feeling like today when I hit that spot from the Netflix special? No. no. Was it cool? Yeah, it was cool. But I didn't get chills. You know what I mean? There's those spots that give you fucking chills, bro. And that's the thing. No. That's that's the thing. Like I'm, I know I'm gonna get the chills when I go to Spawn Ranch. When I go to Alcatraz, yep. I'm gonna get the chills. I know it. Like there's certain spots, I'd be like, what the fuck? Certain certain things are gonna be certain things are gonna be weird for me to other people maybe. Like you remember you remember the movie Body Double from 1984? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how well you know the movie, but there's a whole scene where he's there's like this hotel. And the, the, the dog hair girl is at the hotel and the main guy is running down the steps. And it, it looks like it's like levels of like balconies. There's a whole bunch of them. And there's a oh, long yeah. staircase next to it. And it goes yeah, right yeah. onto the beach. And I found exactly where that is. That's in Long Beach. I have the address. Oh, and that's awesome. So, but when I go there and I walk out onto the beach and I turn around and I look at it, I'm going to be like, what the fuck is going on right now? You know what I mean? I already know it. I'm like excited that I'm sitting here in Brooklyn. You know? I still, I, I think I still have that movie on Betamax. That's awesome. But you know what? If you rewatch it, it does not hold up well. It's 
bad. <laughs> I was gonna say when you were when you when you mentioned it, I'm like, it's probably been at least 20 years since I've watched that movie. It's at least not, 20 years. It's not good. It's it's Melanie Griffith is awesome in it. It's just but the story is bananas. It's so far fetched. It's it's overly dramatic for no reason. Yeah, no reason. No reason. It's a bad movie, but I love it for whatever reason. Probably because it's nostalgia. And I remember as a little kid watching it and loving it as a kid. And yeah, yeah I went so far as I, I found, once I found out what that place was called, I can't remember on the top of my head, but I went onto like eBay and I found like an original postcard from that. It's like a hotel. And I mm -hmm. found it and I bought it for like 20 bucks. It's like a fucking postcard from that place from like the 80s. And I have it in my kitchen for no reason, just to have it, you know, stupid shit. But yeah, these are these are why the not? Yeah. Why the fuck not? These are the reasons why we do the shit we do. You know, it's all good. Man. Yep. Yeah. Yo, let me can, can I throw in my uh my, I need to throw out my sponsors before I forget. Absolutely. Dead Sled Coffee. Go to deadsledcoffee.com and type in the promo code Delta Bravo and you'll get 20% off of your order. Follow them on Instagram also at Dead Sled Coffee. Main Street Jukebox, owned and operated by our Delta Bravo brother Tom. Le How do you say his last name? Lafarve. Lafarve. Lef <laughs> like Brett I've, I've never heard him say it, so I don't no, know. No, me neither. I had to get him on, too. I'm surprised. He, I need to get him on. But, uh, yeah, Main Street Jukebox, he owns that spot. It's been open since the mid-'90s. It's in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Follow them on Instagram, also at Main Street Jukebox. It's Main Street Jukebox. It's M-A-I-N-S-T Jukebox. MainStreetJukebox.com as well. He's also on Facebook. Kevin Bednar's Delta Bravo brother. He's the one that allowed me to drop a name to get onto the Waco compound, which is this is another fucking crazy story. But uh, he owns three spots in, in, in Virginia. It's the Percival Eats, the Percival Pub, and the Ashburn Pub. Follow them all on Instagram and all that stuff. Um, I've been to two out of the three spots. My next road trip, maybe I'll stop at the Ashburn Pub. But he's a super good dude, and he's a crazy talented artist. And... Uh, yeah, and and all I all I ever ask anyone to do is just go to Instagram and follow at Delta Bravo Mission Statements. In the bio, in the the link in the bio there, there's a link to find everything. Outsiders House, Delta Bravo, uh, Delta Bravo, and podcast related everything. And there's like 15 different links for everything. And I never say it. I never even actually plug it. But I just recently started a Patreon account. You'll get free shit or whatever. All it does, and I can't stress it enough, nobody is making a dime off of this. Nobody. There's like three tiers. It's like five bucks, 10 bucks. And the third one is only limited to like five people. And it's a sponsorship tier. And it all it basically does is pay for like hosting shit. And, you know, I throw the guy who puts the videos together, I throw him money. And whatever, whatever I get from that, I'll flip right back into mission statements and send everybody who's a patron stuff so it's not like you're donating anything and no one's making money it just keeps this so i don't take you know the money out of my pocket which i don't mind doing anyway to have this shit going on but if you just go to patreon.com slash i think it's delta bravo mission statements as well that would be cool if you do it would be cool if you don't it doesn't make a difference i just figure i run it up the flagpole see who salutes it you know but uh yeah other than that thank you for everybody for listening and being a sponsor what else you got, my man? You have stuff that you want to plug? No, I'm good. No. <laughs> good shit. Good shit. Well, when's the next time you're coming over this way? Do you have any plans to come back to New York anytime soon? Uh, or anywhere in the vicinity? Actually, I'm going to be in, uh, we're going to be in York. Um, so my wife's family is from York, Pennsylvania. Um, okay. So we'll be there um, around Christmas. And we were talking about, is this place out so so we like we do a lot of stuff around food okay. it's like centered on food so we find uh most of the places we go to are because of like something we've eaten or want to eat all right Didn't you do an anthony bourdain spot in france yeah the place that he killed himself at oh, crazy 
and the um the last restaurant that he ate at yes um we didn't even intend to do that like we were going there regardless and i was looking at what happened there, and then i was like oh shit wow. like this happened here like yeah um yeah sorry so, so, you just mentioned food and then it did i put two and two together so like um like when we were talking before earlier about um about going down to the lower east side there's that burger place um, right off of St. Mark's, Paul's Burger Joint. Yeah. I love going there to get a burger. Okay. I, I think about it like several uh-huh. times a year. Like, I got to get back to New York to go to Paul's to get a burger. Yeah. Um, it's like tradition. Uh, you have to do it. There's certain things yeah. you got to do. So there's a place in Jersey um, that we stopped at on our way back from Asbury Park. Um I want to say it's the town of Neptune, New Jersey. Okay. And there's a pizza shop there called Luigi's Pizza. Okay. And it's probably one of the best pieces of pizza I've ever had in my life. Like that I yeah. still think about it. Like years later, like uh-huh. I've got to go to Neptune, New Jersey, and get a slice of pizza. All right. <laughs> there you go. So, well, well, let I me know. When, when, let me know if you're going to be in the vicinity and we'll plan it out and we'll go hit a spot that you want to go hit or whatever. Yeah, so I, I think around Christmas time, I'll probably be planning like the week between Christmas and New Year's Okay, um, to be in the East Coast somewhere. Yeah, somewhere um, in I'm the not, tri-state area. Yeah, I'm I'm not 100% certain where or yeah. when yet. Like, I don't I get, get that until like Thanksgiving. But, I got it. Cool. Well, let no, me I definitely got to get back up there. I definitely got to get back up there soon. Like, Joe, uh, like Joe Kassar, like every like two or three months, he's like, hey, when are you coming out to New York? When yeah. are you coming out? Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I got I got to hit him up because there's a, a shot that he knows where it is. And I, I had a feeling it was on Staten Island. And it's a shot of Ray Kwan from the Wu-Tang Clan. And it's a screenshot from the DJ K Slave video. It's called Rolling 110 Deep. I don't know if you ever know about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like 40 minutes long and it's 110 yep. rappers. It's crazy. And it looks like everybody, well, there's a few people that you can't tell where they are, but whoever is rapping is basically like in their hometown or whatever. So yeah. I kind of figured that Ray Kwan was in Staten Island. So I sent it over to him. He's like, dude, that's a couple blocks from my house. You should come out and we'll, we'll do it together. So I need to get that out of my phone too and go link up with y'all. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Well, cool. Dude, hour and a half goes like this crazy time flies when you're having fun yeah dude we could do this shit all day yesterday i recorded with rayan and we went like almost two hours also we're like dude that felt like 10 minutes crazy yeah Yeah. dude thank you this was awesome you and uh dude we we could always we could always come back and you know after several episodes and do a part two like if you come into new york or whatever and we hit some spots and you'll come back on we'll bullshit about what we did you know delta bravo absolutely You know, maybe go awesome. hit a show. I, I I haven't been to a show in like a while, so I'm kind of due. So maybe maybe that could be incorporated if time and circumstances permit, but I'm down. Awesome. I am too. Dude. Alan, thanks, my man. Thanks, Jimmy. Every, anytime. Be good, brother. See you, buddy.